welcome back to I've Been Influenced. I'm your host, Justine Baker, and today we have Zach and Bliss from Love is Blind. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having us. Hi. So a lot has happened since the end of the show. Can you just run us through everything? Yeah, oh my gosh, so summary. much has happened. You want to take the summary, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we got married. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> I think a, a year is a good amount of time before yeah. spoilers, you know. <laughs> Bliss is the, the queen of fighting against spoilers. Yeah, I'm very anti-spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so we're married, um, and everybody knows we got a little baby on the way. Yeah, we... Thank you. Um, yeah, we went to we did like our official honeymoon after after the altar actually, and we went all over Europe and pretty much traveled for the whole year. And then yeah, we we moved into our first like big home, so that was wow. exciting. And now we're growing our family. We got our animals back. It's everything's good. That's incredible to hear. Yeah. So, what initially made you two want to be a part of the show? <laughs> um, for me, I, I was kind of like a why not mentality. I, I maybe was really risk adverse, like in my early twenties. And at this point I was like, you know what, why not try it? Like what could happen? The probability that it will work out is probably zero, but might as well try something different and new. And I was single and it just worked out. <laughs> yeah. I, I was in a, at a point in my life where really finding my person was just the next step, right? I, I felt good in my career. I felt good at all the other aspects of my life, but that was the one thing that was really missing was finding that special person. Um, and it was something that I really wanted. And, uh, you know, I kind of live in a small town um, before I moved to Seattle. And I, I moved to Seattle specifically to find bliss. <laughs> and um, that was, you know, so I came up to Seattle for that purpose. You found me in California, though, but yeah. That's true. Technically, <laughs> I didn't find you in California. Um, but we met for the first time in person in Seattle. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so for me, it was, I, I also felt like this probably isn't going to work, but I believe in miracles. So maybe a miracle is going to happen. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. We're really cheesy, to be for fun. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> How has your perspective on love changed since being in the experiment? Hmm. You know, I think for me, it really, it really did change. I, I didn't realize how um, much a psychological connection could be built deeply without meeting someone directly in person. Um, and it also, it, it grew me in a lot of ways um, in my understanding of, of love. But I think being married has grown my understanding of love mm -hmm. immensely as well. There's something really special about commitment, um, and I think it's something that it it just changes things so much. Like the the way that we got married, um, we did it so fast, and the level of depth and and commitment to one another that we had so early on, I think, is very different from anyone who's been uh, in a relationship for two months, right? You know, like mm -hmm. at two months, the level of commitment we had, we're married. Um, and it, it was different, different than any relationship ever. I mean, it just, that, that commitment and there's something very special about it. And so I think that there's something to be said about that, about making that decision that this is my person, you're the one and saying that to each other, um, that makes your love <laughs> that much stronger. Yeah. And I think for me, just kind of adding on to that and as cliche as it sounds, you truly can fall in love with someone without seeing them. Like it, it actually does happen. It's not an opportunity that a lot of people maybe will ever get or understand, but it is something that's true. And I think for me, I'm a lot less judgmental about how people fall in love and their stories because everyone's story is so different and people can look at our story or, you know, any of the other couples that have gotten married through this and wow, that was so fast. And how did you know? And what were you doing? And it's just, you really don't know something unless you actually like walk through those experiences. So it's definitely helped me look at, be more accepting of, of people's love stories and just embracing them. Are there any challenges you guys have faced being in the public eye and being vulnerable and being in love? 
Yeah, I mean, I think when you're, that was like the biggest kind of struggle for me kind of thinking about doing this was that everyone is going to have an opinion. And luckily, I think we've been very supported by people, which has been amazing. But there's are those people that, you know, do say negative things and stuff like that. And it's something that, that does happen. And it's just a kind of a part of it. And you kind of just learn to kind of roll with the punches and just kind of try to let it wash off your shoulders. Yeah, I think um, a lot of times we make kind of snap judgments based on limited information. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of based on, it's, it's how we have to think really. There's so much information out there and you only have so much time to look into something. And so I think initially when people saw our relationship on a snapshot, just like, um, I think there's a lot of expectations and preconceived notions um, looking uh, at like how things happen on the show. And I think as people got time to look a little bit deeper and understand the nuances, um, they, they really got to understand that our love was a lot deeper and there was a lot more to it. But I think just understanding that people are going to make snap judgments um, and you, you can present information to people uh, to kind of understand um, the nuance, but you don't, you, you can't, you can't expect people to, to understand the nuance of it. And, and you just have to understand your own love. Yeah. And, and a lot of people are like coming out of situation from their own personal perspectives, right. from their own, mm -hmm. you know, jaded ways or their jaded experience or their own judgments of themselves, you know, sometimes. So a lot of it is them just projecting, I've realized, and there's no yeah. convincing people. And why spend your time doing that? So yeah, that's 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 really um, something that's been illuminating. Mm -hmm. I think realizing that a lot of the vitriol that you see um, on social me media is more like a cathartic tool for people to to vent out their own frustrations that they have in their own lives that they can't actually express. I think, and so under not taking it personal and knowing mm -hmm. like this probably isn't about and that's e even outside of social media that's usually true, right? Like this probably isn't about us and and, and me. It's probably about something else that's mm -hmm. happening. Um, but yeah, I think taking it with uh, a grain of salt and mm -hmm. how has being on social media and having all these followers now how's that changed in your regular life do you see people in public and they want pictures or you're kind of like celebrities so how's that changed yeah, it's definitely different. <laughs> I'm one of those people who's a very like low maintenance on the day to day. So I'll just mm -hmm. be like, you know, rolling out with like wet hair, or whatever, and sweats. Um, and people are like, Bliss. I'm like, who? Like, you know, or I think I have a moment where I think that I know them and my brain's trying to calculate, how do I know this person? I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't know this person. <laughs> um, but it's it's been definitely different. Like we, you know, when we traveled um, all over Europe, like it's crazy how international the show is. Like people watch the show and love the show from all ends of the world. And it's, it's really cool to see how it touches, you know, people's lives like that. But it's been a very, um, you know, it's always very positive. And so I feel like it's been something that's really sweet. And um, yeah, it's definitely different though. You're kind of always like maybe being watched. So it definitely makes you kind of like, oh, okay. Just <laughs> be aware of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that it is really beautiful when um, you meet someone and they have uh, felt um, affected by you in, in your uh, story that they know or in just meeting you. And for me, like I, I never really mind when people come up to us and wanna say hi, because um, I, I just, I know what that's like. Like I, I, I've definitely been a fan of, of like people and then like getting to meet that person and have a conversation with them. It's, it's really special and it just makes your day. So for me, the more people that I can make feel that kind of just a little special that day. I mean, that's that's really a, a privilege. Mm -hmm. So speaking of social media, we have a few questions from some of our followers online. So from Crystal So Bright, if you came with a disclaimer, what would it be? Mm. Oh, disclaimer. That's a good one. <laughs> um, watch out for me in the morning. I am not a morning person. <laughs> I get pretty grumpy. <laughs> so yeah, do you think that's a good one for me? <laughs> Usually um, asleep when I'm up early, but yeah. I'm not a big morning person. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that'd be a, a good one, I think. <laughs> I mean, you're better than I am. As, I mean, you're nicer. You're just tired, more tired. But I'm like, <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, what would be my disclaimer? Um, get ready to listen. Be, you know, be ready to listen. Mm. <laughs> You're a very, very verbose lawyer. So I would say. <laughs> Warning, pontification. Yeah, coming. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. From Liv Williams' photo, do you still keep in touch with everyone from Love is Blind? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we're really close to Chelsea and Kwame. We, we see them a lot. Um, we talk to Brett and Tiff all the time still. Pretty, yeah, I talk to Amber and and everyone we actually you know even from previous seasons too we've been able to make connections with some of them so that's been really lovely Paul and I hang out quite a bit Jim Jimmy you didn't get to you get to see Jimmy a little bit in after the altar altar. uh the funny thing is uh if anyone watched it he was like the MVP of that game yeah, and he only game. got like this. I know. But he, Zach threw the winning ball toss to him. <laughs> oh my god! He, he just jumped in the air and landed. It with, was beautiful. And skidded him and, and like... Kwame. It was that that football game was not fair. I, I'll tell you when I had <laughs> our team was Jimmy and Kwame like, on the team. I was like, waited. you guys. All right. I think I think the cool thing about Love Is Blind and going through this experience, you you bond with these people in a way that you haven't bonded maybe unless you've gone to camp or like they really seem to have it since childhood um and it's it's really it's a really beautiful thing so definitely a lot of lifelong friendships nice from marilyn neo were you worried or anxious about having a baby too soon after getting married yeah you know i feel like it's funny because people the show came out a year after it was filmed so people think that we like were, you know got married if it's like live or something and we just got married and then we had a baby mm. so we 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 had a lot of time to like develop our marriage off camera and like outside of the social media world which to me i'm really grateful for yeah. um and so i i feel like it, it isn't too soon for us um we we know what we wanted i feel like as people we really developed ourselves i think if we were like in our early 20s you know maybe we would have taken more time but it was just the right time for us and it was very purposeful yeah we planned it out like we we decided it intentionally the timing of it we Mm -hmm. talked about it i mean i think a few months after we got married we were talking about it like timeline when we would want to do it and then when the time was there we we were both ready Mm -hmm. And then from Midwest Mo, do you believe in love at first sight? Oh my goodness. So when I first saw Zach, um, I had already loved him, but I felt like this very intensified love when I first saw him, even though I was annoyed with him. Um, So it's difficult to say because I'd already loved him without seeing him before that. But other than that, I haven't really experienced a love at first sight, maybe infatuation at first sight. Okay, short answer is yes. <laughs> um, long answer is that I think the word love is um, too simplistic. It encompasses so many different things, right? Um, and I think like if you look at other languages, um, there's more complex uh, constructions of love that can encompass different things. So like the word agape um, means an unconditional love, right? The love you have for a child or the love that you have for your beautiful wife. Um, and then like, uh, there's another word called eros, which is like that romantic, intense chemistry you have. Um, and then there's philia, which is like the deep friendship you have with your friends or your beautiful wife. Um, and I, I think that when you have all three of those types of love, that's like put a ring. And Bliss and I had, had that immediately. Uh, and so it didn't take me long before we met in person um, to, you know, that was, it was, it's pretty wild when you think, because it was like, what, a week? Yeah. A week after we first met in person yeah. uh, that I proposed to you. Mm-hmm. And that was, I was, I'll tell you, when Bliss and I met, I was nowhere in that headspace. But I mean, when we met, I just knew, I knew it was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not in the right headspace right now, but this, you know what you need to do, just do it. Um, and so would, to answer your question about do I think I love at first sight, Eros, like that chemistry when you see someone, 
you know it's there or you you know it's not when you first see someone i think i do i do believe in that yeah but do i believe that you have all three upon seeing someone no right i don't think you can can mm -hmm. gauge that and in fact what i would say is i think it's the least important okay um, what would you say is the most important you know i i think that shared sacrifice um is the most important thing um, for a deep lasting love because that is the kind of thing that is the I would die for this person mm -hmm. right I I would because I know you would do the same right like that that love that 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 is way more important than than the the physical chemistry that those things matter but I, I don't think for long-lasting love that they really matter and I think that's the core of love is blind like that's what they're seeking to to explore and I think if you come at your uh, relationships with that view um, and I said because I think there's all kinds of people that can work right like I really believe that but it, it comes from a willingness to sacrifice for the other person where that deep love is going to come from. See what I mean about the disclaimer? I was going to say, beautifully <laughs> said. Yeah, he is very beautiful with his words. <laughs> what can people expect next from you guys? Any fun collaborations, projects? Um, so I just launched my like passion, um, Bliss Theory, which is all about empowering women to take charge of their lives. And it's all about career and dating and relationships and just life in general. And so that's gonna be where a lot of my time is is being spent um, over this next year. And very excited about that. It's been something that I've wanted to do for many years. So um, yeah, and then I'm really, you, I'm really excited <laughs> about Bliss launching um, her new life coaching business. It's yeah. it's really exciting. Um, Bliss has been a professional for almost a decade, um, right? When did I graduate? Call it longer. Yeah, and she's she for a decade. There, yeah, she's so impressive in what she's accomplished um, and the different fields that she's worked her way up to. Um, I I watch her all the time. Um, up to this point, helping friends and family negotiate salaries. And um, just recently, uh, there was someone that she helped out uh, who, I, I, it was really impressive. Um, she landed this job that the, the salary that she was able to secure was way beyond, I think, what um, they could have asked for. I mean, it was like she, they got the most that they were willing to give, and this was the first time that person had been in that industry. And so I, I see her helping so many women in her life. And so knowing that she's going to be able to extend that, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, dedicate like my time truly to that. Yeah. It's very, you know, feels so right and good. And I think encouraging people to do that, right, to do what makes you feel yeah. good is, is a really big part of it too. So, so um, we also uh, are going to be we have a, a little YouTube that we've been playing with. We, we're not really super uh, great at all the social media stuff, surprisingly, <laughs> but we're, we're developing it, learning we're it. We're not Gen Zers. So. Um, <laughs> but we're also doing uh, a little podcast like that we've been doing on our own. We haven't released any of the, the content for it. Release it. But <laughs> yeah, we're going to release it really soon. It's It's been... Um, like a bonding experience yeah. in a way that like, even if we never release any of the episodes, we will. Um, we can't tease like that. <laughs> it, it has been something that I just like doing with her because a lot of times in the day to day life, you, you go to work, you do, you do your job, you come home, you take care of the chores around the house and then you cook and then you, you know, you clean and then you lay down and you watch TV and you don't get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with your significant other or that person who's special in your life and um it actually just forces us to sit down and just look each other in the eye and talk and and have this this point in our our day uh where we have this like deep connection so that's been really cool yeah and then yeah. we're actually going to our baby moon tomorrow to maui so exciting. we're excited to go there and hopefully find some ways to help the community too while we're there with rebuilding yeah. And then on on my side, I've been working with uh, a team up teaming up with another law firm in uh, in Washington and Bellevue and uh, the Tri Cities, and we're we're launching a um, a, a 
uh, a firm, it, it's a, it's a, what you call a non-equitable partnership, uh, essentially with two firms working together um, to serve the, the greater community around um, traumatic uh, brain injuries and uh, catastrophic injuries, trucking accidents. Um, so personal injury stuff uh, where people have been severely hurt um, and trying to help them navigate that environment and get the compensation that they need. So that's something that's new for me um, that I'm, I'm moving into, so. You both are so busy. We love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I always like to end my interviews by asking what or who has been your biggest influence in your success in your journey? For me, it's definitely been my mom. Um, I think since I was a child, she kind of was um, grooming me, for lack of a better word, to believe that I could really do anything that I want. And that has really, really shaped me to be the person that I am because a big part of going and doing anything or trying something is believing that you can do it. And that basically gets you like 80% there and the rest is like action and execution. So she's just a really beautiful person. She's, you know, especially like as I think about becoming a mother, um, I, I want to be like her. She's, a, she's touched a lot of lives and it's, she's just an inspiring person. Hmm. It's a hard question for me. Um, I think that my uh, grandparents really inspire me. Um, and I think um, my, my grandpa John, his, um, his parents, my great, great grandparents on their side, um, they had this love that was so inspirational. Um, they lived into their uh, they're, I believe, into their 90s um, before they passed. And I got to meet them a couple times as a kid and also um, in my 20s. And at 90, they were still so deeply in love. Like, you could just see it. And so I, I think that is a, a tremendous inspiration. My grandma Jean, who um, Bliss has met, mm -hmm. and my grandma Karen, um, um, they're, they're very inspirational. I think Grandma Jean is such a strong woman. Your mom's mom. Yeah, my mo mother's mom. And she has, she's really like the glue that has kept our family together. Um, so I hope that we, we can be that for our family. And uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, and I'm so happy that I was able to share your story Yay. and some life updates. Thank you so much for having us. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm Justine Baker. Thanks for watching this episode of I've Been Influenced. You can find more videos like this on our YouTube, social media, website, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe and follow our channel so you never miss a video.